In this lesson, we are going to implement Google one tap login in React and Node.js. What we're going to do is to create a React application and a Node.js application. And inside the React, we use Google one tap package to implement a one tap login box from Google. We use the client ID in the Google Cloud service to authorize the user. And when user click on their name to log in, we show the user name and the user email here. User can click on logout to go back to the not login state. Let's implement this feature together. Let's start by opening VS Code and in the terminal menu, click on new terminal. Go to your favorite folder. I'm going to go to the desktop and create a React application using this command npx space create React app. Set the app name to whatever you like. I'm going to set it to one tap login app and press enter to create the React application inside the desktop. In the meantime, let's create client ID in Google console. Here it's time to go for creating Google Cloud Platform project. First of all, log into Google and then go to this link. If you already have a project, you will have your project here. But for the very first time, click here, click on new project and enter a name for the project. I'm going to set it to React Google login. Click create. After creating the project, click on select project. Then click on navigation menu. From API and services, select credentials. In this screen, you need to configure consent screen. Click on it. Select external, create. Enter your app name, React Google app login. Select your email here. It's optional for app logo and enter your website name if you like here. I'm going to keep it empty and then select developer contact information. Enter your email, select save and continue. In the scopes, there is no need to have any change, just save and continue. In the test user, you need to add yourself as a test user. So click on add users, enter your email, and click on add. So you will have your email here, click on save and continue. And that's it, you created OAuth consent screen. The next step is gonna be going to credentials, click on create credentials, select OAuth client ID, and select the application type to web application. The name of it is React Google login or whatever your app name is. Here is very important, authorize JavaScript origins. Click on add URL and enter localhost, HTTP column slash slash localhost 3000, add another one, copy and paste it, make it to port 5000 on create. That's it. Here we need to click on copy to copy the client ID. Go back to the project. Let's follow the instruction here, cd one tap and click on npm start to start your application. Great, we have the React application running here. Go back to VS Code and from file menu, click add folder to workspace, go to your desktop and select the folder one tap login app that you created earlier. Then go to this folder and right click on empty space select new file and set file name to .env. What we're gonna do here is to define environment variable for the client ID in the Google. Set the name of variable to react underline app underline Google client ID, put equal sign and paste the client ID from this step. Save the file and restart the project to apply this setting to the project. Let's go for the next step. In src, open app.js and get rid of content inside 
header then install google one tab package click on plus to create a new terminal npm install google one tab it's a package to implement google one tab sign in in react application awesome next step import google one tab in app.js and define option for google one tab like this define options constant it's an object that contains settings including client id we get the client id from the environment variable the variable that we have defined here next setting is auto select it's false and cancel on tab outside is false also the context that we are going to use is sign in you can change this setting based on your preference next step inside the app define login data state so we use use state hook imported by control space on it and the default value is based on the value in the local storage if we have login data in the local storage use json.parse to convert it to a javascript object and put it as a default value for login data and if there is no login data in the local storage set it to null by default it's null so login data at the first place is null then define use effect here is the structure of use effect hook control space on it to import it from react and inside the function of use effect check login data if it doesn't exist i mean if it's null user is not logged in so we need to use google one tap to show one tap login to the user the first parameter for login one tap is the options that we have defined here and second one is a callback function that happens after user click on their username in google one tap so define async function like this and inside this function we get the response let's console log the response and send an ajax request to the backend here is the code to send the ajax request i'm using fetch the api is slash api slash google login we implement this api later here is the options for this ajax request the method is post and the body is the credential inside the response from google we pass it as token to the api at this address in the headers set the content type to application json then get the data from the response using response.json and update the state based on the data from backend and save it inside the local storage use a stringify to convert the data javascript object to a string data type because local storage only accepts set item to get rid of this warning click on the lamp and add login data to the dependency array when there is a change in the login data this function runs again let's implement logout define function handle logout in this function what we do is to just remove the login data from the local storage and set the login data state to null let's go to the header section define heading one set the title of your project i'm implementing google one tap login in react and node.js then define a div inside this div check the login data if login data exists just show this text in heading three you login data dot name logged in as login data dot email let's wrap it inside a div and right before closing div define a button for logout if user is not logged in just show this message not logged in great we implemented the code for app.js let's test the result aha uh -huh. here i'm getting this beautiful one tap box 
If I select my name, nothing happens here. Let's fix this issue. Before that, make sure that in the credential, when you go to your client ID, inside the authorized JavaScript origin, make sure you have localhost, localhost 3000, and localhost 5000. And if you want to deploy it on another server, put the address of that server there. If you don't set this, you will not get the one tap box here. Great. Let's implement this part. When user logged in, we want to show the username and email. To do this, we need to implement the server side. Inside the empty space, create new file, set file name to server.js, and npm install express.env and Google auth library to implement the backend for this authentication application. Then import express.env and OAuth to client call .env config to read the environment variable from .env file and define a client by creating a new object from OAuth to client. Pass the client ID from Google as parameter to this class. Next step is creating Express application and use express.json to read the content inside the post request body. Then define users and define this function, absurd. What it does is to add a new user to the list of users if it's not already exist. Next step is defining the API at this address slash API slash Google login. Get the token from request.body here. We are using this API and pass the body, pass the token as body. So we get that token at this point in the backend and define a ticket. The ticket is coming from client.verifyID token, pass the token and the client ID. Next step, get the name, email, and picture from ticket.getPayload and add that to the list of users. Send the status 201 and send the username, email, and picture to the front end. Save the code and call listen on app. Read the port number from the environment variable. If it doesn't exist, use 5000 as port number and show this beautiful message. Save the code and let's set the proxy in the package.json right after the name to find the proxy. So in the React application, when we send an Ajax request, automatically it's gonna be proxied to this address. Save the code here, open your terminal that you run npm start, stop it and run it again to apply this proxy. After that, in a new terminal, run node server.js. Uh -huh. Here we have project running in backend and it's time to test the result. Refresh, select your name and there we are. We successfully implemented Google one tap login in this course.